afternoon. My name is Amanda and welcome to The Done Creative. Before we get into this pick a card reading, I just wanted to let you guys know I have a live stream channel called The Done Creative Live where I go live doing readings over there a few times a week. The link for that channel is in the description below. And also, maybe at the time of your watching this, but if you're watching at the time of my posting, it's not quite there yet, but very soon, September 6, 2021, Labor Day. I didn't realize it was Labor Day when I had scheduled this. I just knew it was the new moon and a great day to do this. I am launching a Patreon. So coming soon, or maybe it is here, check the description box below for the link if it is after September 6th and you're watching this. It'll be there. Otherwise, hold tight. I am leaking and sneak peeking over on my Instagram and maybe occasionally here on YouTube on my community tab. But for this pick a card reading, we're going to be getting a message from your higher self. Just anything that needs to be brought to your awareness, maybe things you're already very aware of, but maybe unsure on how to navigate, you know, whatever comes up. And if you're new to pick a card readings, I just ask that you close your eyes, take a couple of deep cleansing breaths to center your energy and focus in on pile number one with Kendra Glamar, pile number two with Tina Turner, or pile number three with Kurt Cobain. Once you've selected your pile or piles, you can go ahead and check the description box below for the timestamp, and I also pin them as the top comment. Please though remember, these are general readings, so only take the information that resonates with you and your situation and leave the rest behind. So without delaying this any further, I'm gonna give you a moment to meditate on your cards and I will see you over at your reading. All right, pile number one, or those of you who selected Kendrick Lamar, this is going to be your reading, a message from your higher self. And as always with my pick of cards, we're gonna start with the tarot and then get additional guidance from the oracle. So what do we have here? Okay, so we have the moon, the devil, and the king of cups. So with this combination, I'm seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. If you've been struggling, if you've been dealing with some depression, dark moods, limiting beliefs, just fear, fear of what could happen in this world. I mean, at the time of my filming this, there's still a lot going on with the old, um, you know, virus going around. There's just a lot going on in the collective, in people's personal lives. There's just, it's, it's a bit intense still. And with this moon, to me, this feels like you're being illuminated or being able to see because on this depiction, we do have a full moon here. So this is letting me know that the full light of truth is being revealed for you at some point. And it to me feels very soon because with this devil energy, this is something you may have been dealing with for a very long time. Some of you, this could be energy or just things, uh, truths, revelations coming to light that maybe you had believed one thing for most or if not all of your life and it's just recently, or maybe for some of you, a very long time ago that you realized, wow, this world is not what I thought. A lot of what's written in history books is a complete fabrication or at the very least, just not the complete picture of what actually happened. And there may even be this kind of death or grieving process surrounding old versions of yourself, old versions of what you thought other people were like and what the world was actually like. Sometimes when we have these revelations that, okay, the world isn't what I thought it was, these, this person isn't who I thought they were, I'm not who I thought I was, you know, it can be a little heavy, it can be a lot heavy, it can be a lot. Um, and this devil, you know, this can really drag us down for a while, but I love that pairing it up with the moon and then obviously here the king of cups, there is that light at the end of the tunnel. You may feel like you're underwater for a while, a moment, a while, depending, you know, where you fall on the spectrum but there is hope because he's floating on top of the water pretty much or on some sort of rock in the middle of the water here. And he is very Zen looking. He is very peaceful. It's like the emotions that were involved, especially, especially because the moon deals with emotions. The King of Cups deals with overcoming emotions and the devil can sometimes play on those emotions. So emotions are really key here. So wherever your water houses are, any, part of your birth chart that has water or even your empty houses if your water houses are empty these houses still indicate a place on your birth chart so wherever those water that water trine is any placements you have within water you know as an example my venus is in pisces so i feel and i feel very deep and when i love something or someone i feel it to the depth of my soul and i just want peace and love and beauty that's just you know a quick little example but 
whatever's going on in your water trine, I see you overcoming something. That's really what this is pointing out. And with the moon here, this adds up, this 18 adds up to a nine. So you are at the end of this cycle and the devil, that energy adds up to a six. So the devil really is an illusion. And the moon talks about um, revelations or something that was hidden coming to light, illusions being revealed to their to true truth, so to speak. And this is kind of more the outcome of this energy as you're gonna work your way through this. So it's not all, oh no, my life is totally turned upside down because of this thing or that person or you know whatever circumstance, my own belief systems. It may feel that way for a minute or a while for some of you, but look, this is your outcome. For some of you, this could look like a father figure. This could look like a significant other, a friend, someone who generally is maybe your age or older or has what you would consider an old soul that's really helping you through this emotional turmoil. For some of you, that could look like some sort of counselor, guru, you know, really close um, friend or family member that you feel you can lean on through whatever it was that you were going through. For some of you watching actually though, I'm feeling like most of this is in the past. Like the bulk of what's happened here, revelations coming to light. I feel like this is in a, you know, the distant to not very recent past, so to speak, for most of you. Um, maybe not most of you, but some of you, they're, they're kind of giving a muddied water, like a status, it's complicated. So wherever you fall on the spectrum or somewhere in that muddy middle, it's cool, it's fine. But what I'm seeing is, you guys, though, especially those of you who've been in this for a while and maybe have overcome it and you can look back and be like, man, this to me just feels like you're more in your power looking back at what's gone on. But those of you still feeling stuck or swirling in this whirlpool of kind of devil limiting belief energy, you're not going to be there long because that light is right there at the end of the tunnel. Okay, so let's go ahead and get additional guidance from the Oracle cards. Okay, so here's what we got going on. It says inner alchemy is achieved when you react to fear with love. And that's exactly what you guys are going to be doing with this devil energy, pairing it up with that king of cups. That's that loving energy, that nurturing energy that you're bringing to this devil energy. So facing your limiting beliefs, facing the lies or the secrets that have been brought to life, you're facing this and you're reacting to this fear of, oh no, what if, or, oh my gosh, this has been going on for so long, or how could they, you know, whatever your case is, you're reacting from a place of love rather than fear. Then here we have the number 50 here, spirit of the river movement toward adventure. And these are all very watery depictions here, at least in these four cards. I mean, this devil is almost looking like they are, it almost reminds me of that picture I've seen going around social media for years now. It's like a painting of Jesus reaching down, like Jesus is standing on the water, reaching down to help the drowning, you know, viewer of said portrait. Such a powerful image, but in this depiction, to me, it's almost like the devil's trying to imitate Jesus. So really what I'm seeing is maybe this devil was like a wolf in sheep's clothing in your life in some way, and you just felt deceived by someone. It could have been in a relationship, a job, maybe even just belief systems you had about the world. And then you felt deceived when you realized these things were lies. I mean, that can be an energy we carry with us, especially those who've, you know, had a spiritual awakening. You can think, okay, I'm, I'm through it. I'm over it. Yeah, they lied. Okay, I'm on to the next. But like, really, have you overcome that? I mean, that's a lot to unpack. And you know, me on my spiritual journey for as long as I've been, it's been years. And I still sometimes think, you know, how could this have happened? How could this planet have gone so far off the rails from its original intention? And, ah, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot, but when we feel these kind of yucky feelings coming up, the best thing we can do is embody this King of Cups and feel our way through them. This guy's not trying to spiritually bypass love and light it away. This guy's not then also on the other end of that spectrum, diving so far deep into his shadow that he gets lost there. He's finding a beautiful balance between the work that needs done and knowing when to do the work and when to um, focus on joy and you know all the things because a spiritual road is not a linear path it's you know twists and turns it's more of a spiral it feels a lot like a little kid scribble drawing you know we're just all over the place but you guys are overcoming something and that's the beauty of this reading is your higher self is revealing 
something that you have either recently overcome or are about to overcome and it's powerful and it's beautiful. So hang in there if you're still in this swirling energy because that light at the end of the tunnel is right there. But with that spirit of the river, I kind of got sidetracked, but movement toward adventure. So some of you are moving out of that kind of dark night of the soul energy or just depression, anxiety, just energy that wasn't really supporting your happiness or your joy. You're moving out of that and into something more adventurous, more exciting. And because we have the number 50 here, that adds up to five, which is all about change. You're making changes that are going to feel more in alignment with this king of cups rather than the, the alignment of the devil energy here. So then we have the netcaster preparations, sorry, preparations come to fruition. Number 42, which adds up to six, which is all about, you know, that nurturing balanced out energy, very temperance energy as well. But preparations, the things that you have prepared, the plans you have laid, you're going to see that again, light at the end of the tunnel or just the fruits of your labor, they're really paying off. All of those nets you have cast, you can now bring them in and find the jewels and beautiful blessings that are in this casted net. And I think spirit is really involved in you guys in helping you guys overcome this. Your higher self is there, obviously, but also your spirit guides, angels, any crossover loved ones that you feel really close to. They are helping you. They are with you. They are supporting and guiding you through this with that beautiful number six energy. And then we have here with the full moon and Libra card, a win-win outcome is forecast. So you guys really are overcoming something. You're feeling like you're not, you know, the underdog anymore. You're feeling like you're in control of your own emotions and reactions to stressful situations and just everything going on in your life. Some of you, this could do with like certain restrictions in your area, you know, the thing going around um, that are being lifted, or maybe you are just coming to a place within yourself that you feel okay with the way things are going. I see someone has actually left a job where they were feeling like they had to compromise their morals or make decisions that they weren't comfortable with, so they decided to leave the job. That could be you, could be, if it's not you, it doesn't resonate, just leave it for that one, I see like one, maybe two people. But a win-win outcome is forecast. And again, you know, when that Libra energy comes up, that's justice. Justice being served for whatever it was that you were transgressed against or, you know, whoever it was that transpired to, you know, make life ha hard for you. You're seeing that kind of karmic reward or, you know, payoff. Then with the Kendrick Lamar card, it says here on his sweater, Dreamer, and his, his um, crown chakra is literally on fire here. So he has got some deep connection to spirit and that's what I see with you guys as well and maybe with this dreamer card she looks like she's asleep um maybe I'm not sure what they were going with on this depiction but it, it could be like she has drowned I don't know but to me it's almost like a sleeping energy but it's not like she's in in trouble or you know on the brink of drowning because to me it's like almost like she's being supported and loved in these nurturing waters rather than taken under if that makes sense so maybe you're getting loving guidance from your your guides and angels and your own higher self also in your dream state but it says become the cure not the symptom so this is you facing that shadow and really going deep and you know that's the hard part is facing our inner demons those inner devils within us that just feel so big and commanding and shadowy in our lives facing these things it, it can be so much uh, so much work so much effort but it's so worth it in the end also don't demand respect command it Yes, look at that. And that's what you guys are doing with, you know, this stuff that's in the past. You're not having to settle for anything less than that win-win outcome, remember, because you are on top here. Finally, for some of you, you're like, finally, oh my gosh, finally. But then it says you can be broke without being broken. So this is all about mindset. You know, some of the happiest people you will ever meet, depending on circumstances, could have almost nothing to their name, so to speak could be living in a tribal village in, you know, off-grid circumstances or just not have very much, but they feel very fulfilled and abundant within. It's not all about material items and, you know, that stuff. But, you know, when we're in this third dimensional matrix, it feels like, you know, if we can't put food on the table, if we can't pay that bill, it's so dire. It's so scary, you know, and, and most of us, from a very early age are programmed through our own ancestry, not everybody, but most, most of the population is programmed with that lack mentality or mindset, that 
kind of struggle, work, got to work hard to um, make a dollar, money doesn't grow on trees, you know, we've all heard these things. And just, you know, this, this uh, programming has been just inundating our ancestry way, way back. It's not just our parents or grandparents that, you know, gave us these limiting beliefs or, you know, it's society's collective shadow of programming that, you know, there's not enough to go around, you know, capitalistic society. So this is almost you guys just breaking out of that matrix, so to speak. So that's big news, really. All right, group one, that's all I think I'm seeing for you, but you will have to let me know below what you thought, if this resonated. And as always, thanks again so much for all your likes, comments, shares, subscribes, and all the things. And I really, truly do hope to see you right here back at the Dun Creative and also over on my live stream channel, The Dun Creative Live, where I go live doing readings over there a few times a week. Link for that channel is in the description below. And very soon, if not, maybe when you're watching this, my Patreon, which may or may not yet, be linked in the description below, but we really do hope to see you over there in the High Vibe Tribe. All right, bye. All right, group number two, or those of you who selected Tina Turner, this is going to be your message from your higher self. And as always with the pick of cards here on my channel, we're gonna go ahead and start with your tarot and then get additional guidance from the Oracle cards. All right, what do we got going on for group two? Make sure we're straight up top, all right. So what we've got going on for you, we've got the Knight of Pentacles, the Ace of Swords, and the Queen of Wands. So there's clarity coming right in the middle here. This is beautiful, ambitious, amazing energy, especially those who have felt stuck, stagnant, or just overworked, underpaid, not knowing really what next step would be. This is beautiful, exciting news that you are getting clarity on to me, this feels like a very internal thing, like a soul, like a soul purpose thing, or just wanting to know how to get out of a depression, wanting to know your next move, like where is my next job? What is my next relationship gonna be? Like you're ready for something new, but maybe you're not quite sure what that thing is yet. But what I love is pairing this up with the Knight of Pentacles. Is this guy, you know, maybe before you guys were in kind of a hurry to figure it out or you felt like, man, I need to get going. I'm like behind the times on what I expected from myself by age, you know, X, Y, or Z. Because, you know, for my own example, I always thought I'd be married with at least one kid by age 24 and that just did not happen. <laughs> it did not happen that way for me. I wasn't married till I was 27 and I didn't have my first baby until just shy of 29. So, you know, our souls and even though we have free will here, you know, sometimes things just don't go according to that ego's plan. And guess what? In, especially in your case, you guys, that is okay. Because where you were maybe feeling un impatient before, once you get this clarity, it's like, okay, I think I'm pretty sure now where I'm going. So that like, like, ah, like, what is the word I'm looking for, spirit? Give it to me. Give me the word. Like, immediate. There we go. Immediate. Like that immediacy to get the next step taken. It's like once you know what those next steps are, it kind of just kind of calls you off the ledge a bit to not be so frenetic in your energy to, oh my gosh, give me the next step, spirit. I, I don't know what to do. I, I, I'm falling behind, I'm falling behind. You're gonna take a deep breath with me right now, group two, right now. <sighs> okay, yes. Once this is, is clear to you, you're gonna then be able to slow down and really process things, really figure out, okay, I think this is what I want. So like, what plans am I gonna make surrounding this thing? What is my next step? What do I need to do? But he's not in a hurry. If he was on a hurry, he would be on the back of this horse, crouched down, ready to go. But he is just kind of leisurely walking, the horse is following him. And I'm sure once he gets a, a couple of really concrete ideas, he can then get on that horse and just really start taking action. But I think you guys are gonna be okay in this kind of it, it to me feels like a, a bit of a stasis, but not for long. It's it's something you are really fleshing out. What are my next steps and kind of planning. It's two of wands energy as well as kind of what I'm seeing mixed in with this Knight of Pentacles. But the Knight of Pentacles is a great card for some for building a stable new beginning because you've taken it a step beyond the Page of Pentacles where that idea is given or you know the message is received. It's like, this is the message being received here in the middle with the Ace of Swords, which I love. And then you're like, okay, let's, let's make this thing happen. Let's, the seed's already been planted. Now let's watch it start growing. And with this Queen of Wands is kind of 
this to me felt like the continuation or the what's the word like kind of the outcome of your tarot section here and this is a great outcome card this is you feeling in control of your next steps and whatever progress and whatever projects you're working on relationships you're working on whatever it is you've got going on your higher self is letting you know you're in command you're in control you're inspired you're excited look at all these little candles these little fires lit with it around her there's a fire within her and then a fire that she's creating from that heart chakra which is an ex you know the palms here are an extension of that heart chakra and that is where that beautiful healing energy comes in and for some of you this could have looked like a healing journey that you've been on to um, get yourself back healthy again or just get better in better shape, get in better wellness. I'm seeing you just wanting to take better care of your physical vessels, some of you. And it's really, it's like you're shining from the inside out. When you fuel your body with what it actually needs on the inside, it starts glowing on the outside. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So let's go ahead and get into your Oracle cards. So we're going to start right here with this little mini starseed oracle card. Signs. The universe has been gently nudging you forward by revealing to you signs and synchronicities. So many of you have been getting those signs and synchronicities. The only numbers I see just in the tarot here, we're not looking at anything else quite yet, we will, is the ace or the one. So we have a one. So you may have been seeing a lot of 111 or 1111 symbolism beautiful angel numbers to see. We've also got a 16, maybe you've been seeing 16, or 12, maybe you've been seeing that. 12 adds up to 3, 1 plus 6 is 7. So these are all numbers you may be seeing repetitively, or maybe seeing 12, 12, or 16, 16, or 12, 16, or 16, 12. You know, take as it resonates. Or even Googling some of these angel numbers can give you additional guidance. So 12, 16, 16, 12, 11, 11, um, 7, 777. 7, 7 or 3333. Three, three. These all could be numbers you're seeing, or if you want to Google for additional homework, I always love to give you guys some homework. But I love also that we have here with this, with all that you've had going on, we've got the empty well, time to replenish. So like I was saying, there might be a bit of a stasis coming up for you, but it doesn't feel like you're stuck. Especially those of you who've been like, well, I've been in stasis for so long, or stasis for so long, that I'm ready to move forward. But now, once you kind of get this clarity, you're like, okay, I see why I've been where I've been, and I see why it might need to continue for just a hot minute left, left over, just one more minute left, and then you're gonna be able to start moving forward and you know, really taking some action. But there is this call for some of you to just replenish yourselves, just refuel your body, refuel your, you know, your creative tank, just take care of yourself for a hot minute because look, with the full moon eclipse card here, conclusions are within reach. So what's whatever you've been going through and dealing with, you're about to see the conclusion to that thing. You're about to have that ending that will then signal a new beginning. And I think most of you are waiting for this new beginning to come, but you're maybe some of you aren't realizing that, okay, this one thing over here has to kind of be completed or finished before I can start this new thing. And I see actually, this is very random, but Spirit's showing me, before, even though it doesn't make sense, energetically, it will make sense. Say you're wanting to start a new business, but like you just never have the funds or the motivation or the whatever, you know, whatever obstacle, insert here. Just as the example, we're wanting to start a business, whatever it is, but your house is a disaster or you just have so much clutter, you don't even know where to set up an office to work. You just got so much going on energetically around the home with physical stuff. So one of the best things you can do first is to clear the decks energetically and remove some clutter, you know, even in internal clutter, like, you know, past traumas, past wounds. Of course, don't you don't have to go searching for these things. If they're close to the surface, allow them to come up so you can heal them, deal with them, and release them. But if, you know, you think, well, my house is clean, my, my spirit feels clean right now, then go ahead and get started. But I think for most of you, there's just some tying up of loose ends that needs to happen before this new endeavor really can be embarked upon. But with this um, conclusions and with our within reach card, I always see this as the eight of wands, which is interesting pairing it up with this more slowest, slowest moving night of all of them. He's just leisurely strolling through. To me, this feels like you're gonna get the insight that you need and then kind of slow down and kind of make a plan about it and then get back on the road quicker 
than you're envisioning in this moment. But again, it may not be like lightning speed, tomorrow you're on the road to whatever it is you're doing, but in the grand scheme of you looking back, you know, once you're over the hump and on the other side of that, hindsight will be 2020 and you'll be like, oh wow, that actually went much quicker than it probably even should have, but spirit has your back. Your own higher self is really coming online to help you get this stuff figured out. We also have the Dragon's Horde card here, protecting the future. So you guys really are, I think some of you have been maybe even stalled out because you're like, I can't mess up. I can't do this thing wrong. I have to do it right, but like I don't have time to do this thing. So it's almost like back burner energy. Some of you may have put your beautiful future on hold to help someone in your life or to, um, you know, work a nine to five job so you can make enough money to then open that business. If we go back to our example, there's going to be many different scenarios for you guys, but there's something about your future that you've maybe put on hold or maybe not allowed yourself to touch or think about or look at that now is right there front and center. And you're able not only to look at it, but to start moving in the direction of that thing. It's no longer under lock and key because this dragon here has the key. There's two keys. So it's almost like, it's like a twofold, like a, a, a lock on the top and, and bottom. So there's two keys you need to get into this thing. And before you're just looking around like this, like, well, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. The key is right there. It's hanging right there, both of them. So you have both keys to unlock yourself from whatever it is that you feel is holding you back. It's gonna resonate differently for each of you. So I think I'll just kind of leave that energy there. But for the Tina Turner card, it says it's not what happens that matters. It's how you deal with it. Yes. And many of you, the, the past baggage, the past whatever in your life that you have felt has been holding you back, it's almost like you're no longer, not that, not that you are making excuses, but you're almost coming to this conclusion like, I'm no longer making excuses. I'm just going to do what I need to do, jump out, jump in, and get this thing done. I'm going to start. I'm excited. You're no, not making any excuses anymore. But then it says here, purge your life of whatever brings you down. So some of you may even be facing some limiting beliefs because this Ace of Swords is going to cut right through any BS belief systems, BS, right? And bring you the clarity you seek. So some of you may have been lying to yourselves in saying, oh, I'm not good enough. I can't do this thing. Who am I to shine? Who am I to create abundance in my life? You know, whatever it is here, you're seeing through the truth to the truth of this thing. You're purging your life of what's bringing you down, which for many of you is your limiting beliefs or just feeling like you're just not good enough, which, you know, kind of falls under the umbrella of limiting beliefs. But it says the most beautiful lotus blooms in the deepest mud. So you're not just abandoning all these things that have happened to you, these traumas that are just, okay, bye Felicia on my past, I'm out. It's like you're realizing and appreciating and, and seeing things again with that hindsight being 2020 you're actually seeing why you had to go through some of your struggles and obstacles in life. And you're maybe even kind of a little bit grateful for some of those hard times because you're seeing that it led you to exactly where you are at the bottom of these little steps here, where you're going to start climbing, climbing, climbing to your destiny, to your dreams, to whatever it is that really lights your soul on fire and, you know, makes you want to get up in the morning and, be that beautiful beacon of light in your own life and in the lives of those who you care about and who you love. So, wow, this was a pretty powerful message from your higher self group too. I love it. I'm here for it. Um, you will have to let me know below what you thought, any stories you want to share. I always love to hear from you. And as always, thanks again so, so much for all your likes, comments, shares, subscribes, and all the things. And I really, truly do hope to see you right here back at the Den Creative, also over on my live stream channel, The Den Creative Live, where I go live doing readings over there a few times a week. Link for that channel is in the description below. And maybe possibly not at the time of my posting, but just shortly after, my Patreon will be live where we are going to be hanging with the High Vibe Tribe over there in a very exclusive way. So if it is after September 6th of 2021, when you're hearing this, then it is, it is live. It is launched. It is there. Go ahead and check it out if you would like to, and we will see you over there. All right. Bye. All right. Group number three are those of you who selected my friend, Kurt Cobain. This is going to be your reading. And of course we are going to start with your tarot cards and then get additional guidance from your Oracle cards. Oh, also, this is a message from your higher self, if I didn't say that again since the intro. <laughs> okay, so what do we have going on here? We have the Page of Wands, the Ace of Cups, and the King of Swords. And wow, this is powerful stuff, you guys. 
For some of you, this is you just falling back in love with yourself. That's really what I'm getting with these two images here of the Page of Wands and Ace of Cups. Just falling back in love with life. Feel, falling, I can't talk, it's tongue twister time. <laughs> falling back in love with yourself, who you are as a beautiful soul and releasing, you know, the circumstances, people, belief systems that just aren't serving what you know to be you on a deeper level. Maybe you have settled in relationships. Maybe you've settled at work or just with your dreams. You're like, well, I'll never accomplish that one thing. So, you know, this is my life. You're done with that. You're done with that. Those of you who are still feeling like, I'm not done with that yet. <laughs> Maybe you have a minute to go, but guess what? It's on the horizon for you very soon. For those of you who have been actually looking for love, for romance, you may be getting a king of swords, someone who is maybe an air sign, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, or just someone who's not afraid to tell it like it is. Someone who has just mastered their own communication skills and knows how to communicate exactly what their heart is feeling. Some of you, if you're already in a relationship, it's like you're taking your relationship to another level, or maybe you're, if you're the more masculine counterpart, um, you don't have to be the man in the relationship, but if you're really embodying that divine masculine, you're just really coming into your own. But if that is more sounding like your partner rather than you, then this could just be you being able to communicate with your partner in a deeper way than you've been able to do in a long time. Or maybe have some sort of breakthrough in the relationship where you're just, you're feeling like, okay, maybe this is solid. Because I do feel for, for one person watching that maybe you are on the brink of breakup or divorce and again if you already feel like you've made your choice and that's your choice and you want to leave then you've made the choice that your intuition has called you to do so um make that choice to leave if that's you but i do see someone who's still unsure and leaning more towards staying and this is just your confirmation that yes staying is your best bet but those of you who things seem fine in your relationship and this is more inner focused within yourself down, you know, we could take this many different ways. And again, wherever you are on the spectrum, or if you kind of hit a couple different points on the spectrum, you can claim or not claim any of this, but you're really falling back in love with your life. You're feeling inspired. You're ready to take action. And I think that this is kind of a collective energy between the other two piles as well, where maybe there was this kind of stuck or feeling a little bit held back, or maybe you were slowly making progress on something, but it just wasn't at the pace that you had hoped or wished you could have made. And now things are moving quickly because this king here moves very quickly. He does not sit around waiting for people to hoe and hum about everything. He's like, okay, here's our decision. Let's go. We're rolling in. Let's go. I just see like a general in an army or something like, okay, the plan has been made. Let's just move on out and do what we need to do. Um, but in this, in this instance, this is a, this is a peaceful army. We're not going to go hurt anybody here. Okay. Let's get some additional guidance from your Oracle cards. All right, so I am noticing a decent amount of blue and green and even yellows going on in your color scheme here. So the yellow is associated with that solar plexus chakra, the green obviously the heart chakra, and then that kind of blue is going up into the throat and even up into the third eye. So there is a lot of kind of solar plexus and above activation going on. But I think for many of you, this is having to do with something you're releasing, something you have released. Because look, on this depiction here, like part of her head is cut off the card here. So to me, it was like, maybe for a while it was solar plexus and heart that were kind of the focus. And now you're moving up the channels even more because there's something you've released. Release anything that keeps you from your path of authenticity. Some of you, um, one or two people I'm seeing have recently left a relationship and now you're feeling free for the first time. Some of you maybe in years. Others of you, this is just that freedom you're feeling within yourself, regardless of what's going on in your love life or not going on in your love life, but just releasing anything that is keeping you from that beautiful path of authenticity, that beautiful path of loving yourself and loving the life that you're leading. Because most of us have been trained or programmed from a very young age not to love ourselves. It's in all of the marketing and media that we are less than and we need this product or you're not as pretty as this celebrity or you know, you're 
bigger than this one and smaller than that one and you know you're too small you're too big you're too this you're too that no 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 none of that you're being your authentic self now you're not trying to fit in all these molds or jump through all these hoops of what society or the media or tv or you know whatever other people in your life are telling you to be for the first time some of you ever are just living your lives for yourselves because this is big this is destined for you to finally and and i mean for some of you finally just say screw all to the noise that's going on around you and say hush i don't want to hear any of your voices i'm trying to listen to my heart i'm trying to listen to that internal voice and for some of you it's still maybe a quiet whisper but for others of you it's getting louder and becoming more of that internal dialogue rather than letting that ego run the show and your higher self is like applauding you that you you understand you got it you're you're figuring it out and i love also with release don't let your past hold you back with south node the south node or k2 in vedic astrology is where we've been and the north node or rahu in vedic astrology is where we're going what we're here on this timeline on this lifetime in this lifetime in this incarnation to do we're not gonna hear we're not here to try to have to repeat a bunch of stuff we're not we're not being held back so to speak like you know back in school everybody's biggest fear was i don't want to be held back <laughs> that's that's probably you know because on some level many of us don't want to be held back as souls and have to kind of repeat old lessons i mean i'm sure many of us have done this and are still repeating lessons we haven't quite learned lifetime after lifetime after lifetime but I think the goal with you guys now is even when things are hard, you're ready to face them now. You're wanting to face them. You're wanting to release the past so you can step into more of this authenticity. So it's almost like you can cross more off your soul's list of, okay, yep, experience that bad relationship. Okay, yep, experienced heartbreak and, you know, bad stuff going on at this old job. Okay, yep, I failed and made all these mistakes, but guess what? I'm not letting it hold me back. I'm moving forward. And for someone, I'm seeing that addiction. Um, and of course, because Kurt Cobain's on the table here, he's also kind of over my shoulder, just talking in my ear like, yeah, I mean, overcoming any kind of addiction, sex, drugs, alcohol, food. I mean, these are the worldly ways. These are vices that are very difficult to overcome. So if you are someone who has already overcome an addiction or you're on the path of recovery, me and Kurt are both like, yes. We're your biggest rock star cheerleaders because you are amazing. That is so difficult. And one of the biggest addictions we all fall under, not, not anybody is immune from this, is just feeling not good enough, feeling that lack, feeling left out somehow, some way. And when we can overcome that feeling of wanting to please everyone else and, and just say no more of that, no more with the noise, I'm going within and I'm gonna please my soul. I'm gonna please my heart. I'm going to be my true self, my authentic self, even if it hurts your feelings or, you know, doesn't really jive with what this person's doing. I'm here to be myself, unapologetically myself. Of course, you're not going to embody this beautiful version of yourself that's going to bulldoze and hurt a bunch of people. That's not what we're saying here. This is you embodying that authentic self, which is pure love. So, yeah, those people who are all about the drama and the gossip and the toxicity of this world they're really gonna be repelled or turned off by what it is you're trying to do with this level up that you're doing. But Kurt says, keep going, keep going. We also have here the number 57, which adds up to 12, the unmarked trail revelation. So this release, these epiphanies of, I wanna embrace more of my higher self. I want to be more of my authentic self. Um, this has come as a result of maybe some sort of awakening, spiritual awakening, Kundalini awakening, or just revelations about the world, about yourself, about other people. You know, things that you thought were one way, you're learning are completely the opposite or just totally different than what you thought. That can lead to growth because it kind of shakes, it pulls that rug out from under you or shakes the foundation from beneath your feet and kind of forces you to go within and really examine you know what is reality what is a soul what is this universe like you know start asking all those hard questions and that is a big part of awakening is just these revelations about the world and how on i did talk about this a lot in group one as well because this was a theme with them but just on what a mass scale we've been lied to 
pretty much everything we believe about the world, about ourselves, about humanity, about everything is just a bald-faced lie. I mean, I, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> and it's hard. And I even said in group one, you know, there is this grieving process when we learn that the world was not that safe little cocoon we thought it was, or that bright, beautiful gem we thought it was. Of course, Gaia, Mother Beautiful, Mother Gaia is an amazing gem in and of herself. But just, I'm talking about that 3D matrix that's overlaid this amazing planet that we live on. That, that is the lie. That is the illusion. That is what's unreal about this whole thing that maybe many of us, many of us were hoodwinked into believing was reality. And then when you step out of that matrix, you know, if you watch the movie The Matrix, you can take the blue pill and just go back to sleep and live your illusions happily. Or you can take the red pill and never be the same, but you will grow on such a massive scale, you won't even recognize who you are years down the road. Or maybe later that week, you know. I mean, these revelations, these, this growth spurt you can have after a spiritual awakening can be very great in such a short amount of time. And that's what some of you are dealing with. With the number 24 over here, that adds up to six. That's that beautiful, unconditional, loving, motherly, nurturing, temperance energy coming in to support you from your wonderful guides and angels. And the galactic mushroom here, the divine matrix. You've still, oh, didn't even read that till just now. Okay, here we're, we're really on to something. Thank you, Kurt, for helping me out here today. I just love when he steps into any reading. He's amazing, amazing help in my life. He, he helped me literally through my Kundalini awakening. So I will always have a beautiful place in my heart for Kurt Cobain. Amazing, amazing soul he is, helping many of us star seeds, light workers, earth angels, artists, whatever you want to label yourself or not. He is there in the drop of the hat if you call on him to help. He, he loves helping creatives especially. He loves it. But what I was saying about that, you know, stepping out of this 3D matrix, it's like this nasty net that was thrown over this beautiful Mother Gaia, Mother Earth that we live on. And when you step out of that nasty net of that 3D matrix, you step back into the original programming on this planet, which is the program of God, the program of Gaia, the program of love, pure love. You're plugging back into those original ley lines, into the original blueprint that this, I'm getting chills, I'm getting chills, you guys. That amazing blueprint that is available for any of us should we just choose that should we just choose that and of course awakening and ridding yourself and kind of twisting your way out of that old matrix net you know it can we can be really wrapped up in it so you know maybe our hair's caught in one side and our arms caught on another and oh no my leg it's way back behind me and I can't reach it to untwist it but it's almost like you know as you work to remove yourself from the netting of this yucky, yucky, yucky 3D matrix. It's like every, t every trauma you face, every shadow you face, every new part of your soul you allow to come online and, and, and brighten that beautiful light that you exude on this planet. And you know, you bring on more of your own higher self into your physical vessel as you release yourself from the 3D matrix. And then I always like to say, here's the thing, um, I like to say we're always, always plugged into the original blueprint of God. We are. Absolutely we are. We just forgot it because we have this kind of other program lying over um, what we perceive to be or what, what really is. There's like an illusion overlaying it. It's almost like putting a filter on a photo, really. That's kind of what Spirit's showing me is there may be this weird kind of hazy, like muddled looking filter over everything we see, everything we do, everything we experience that's not reality. Or maybe it's almost like it, um, it's like one of those filters where, you know, you get a cutesy cartoon face or it makes you look, you know, like you have makeup tattooed on your face or whatever, all these different filters, but that's not reality. It's just kind of a, a little overlay and it might look pretty and it might intoxicate you like a lot of the worldly pleasures do here when we are human but you group three are finding your way back to love and you're realizing that that's a much more intoxicating but in a healthy way kind of feeling that wow i don't even know how to put this into words but once you step out of the you know 
the, the, the <laughs> Kurt's like, it's just all bread and circuses. <laughs> yes, you're right, but once you step, it's like the Truman Show. It's like once you, once Truman realized he was literally in a TV show and his whole life was a lie and he lived on a, uh, basically on a movie set his whole life with a paid actors as his best friends and his wives and, you know, once he realized that, he went in, I'm sure, had a, a very hard time accepting that, but once he released himself from that net of, okay, I'm no longer in this lie, I'm no longer in this 3D matrix, he then had potential and possibility that was so endless for his future that it may have been almost scary for him, I'm sure, but once the movie was over, it's like, now Truman can start his life, the real life that he was meant to live all along. If you haven't seen that movie, it's a great one um, for just realizing the nature of reality may not be as real as you think, but everything was so real to Truman as he was living it, right? It all felt real because it was real to him in the moment. Even looking back, even though like his wife was a paid actor, his best friend was a paid actor, all the people, you know, choreographed into the street as he's leaving for work and but it was still very, very real to him in the moment. And that means what I'm seeing here for some of you, like afraid to step out of that, is that you don't have to lose all your beautiful memories just because you know the truth of life now. You still get to keep all that. That still was real and is real to you. But when you can see something from that higher perspective, that bird's eye view, life can feel so much more fulfilling. There's not that empty hole. So many of us, so many of us that are awakening have always longed for a place called home but we couldn't quite place it because our actual physical home and maybe even the people in that home never quite fit with the home that we could it's like we could feel a big part of us was missing or a big piece of you know our heart or or home was missing all along but you guys are getting that back look you're getting that back Oh, your higher self is amazing. Um, let's wrap this up with Kurt's card, right? Let's save the best for last. Kurt Cobain. We're all in this mess together, so we may as well make some noise. That's absolutely correct. You know, once it's going, he's showing me again, going back to Truman's reality, you know. He he realized, okay, yeah, we're all in this mess together. Now now he's going to go make make some noise, do live life his way. You know, we, we only get one shot at this incarnation fly so if you see that I apologize <laughs> but you know we are limitless beings having this one human experience but then we have another human experience and another whatever 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 how many down the line but you get one shot at this exact specific incarnation so make it the best you can we're in this mess we, we signed the contracts we incarnated here so we're in the thick of it so we might as well make some noise and make this the best incarnation we can possibly make it while we're here. Don't become your own tribute band. So this is having that healthy dose of checking yourself before you wreck yourself as far as the ego goes. Just making sure your ego isn't running the show, which I think many of you have really come into the awareness that the ego maybe had been running the show for you and maybe many of you are even years out from allowing that. But even those of you who are just starting your spiritual journey, just remembering that that nasty voice in your head is not you. You're the observer of that nasty voice in your head, okay? So even if you hear all these mean things about yourself in your own head, you don't have to believe them. But also you can't buy teen spirit, so I love that. This is all about, you know, you can't purchase your soul. You can't sell your soul. I mean, you know, there are people who try, I'm sure, um, if you believe any of the conspiracies out there. There are people who try, but, um, I don't think there's any way you could sell it, so you definitely can't buy it. So what I'm seeing with this, the main message Kurt's really showing here is that you're going to have to go through the paces. You're going to have to actually take the steps to, you know, it's kind of like a, an obstacle course, like a, a boot camp training or something where you can't just say, hey, I will sponsor so-and-so to run the obstacle course for me. No, you're going to have to be the one to get in there and do the dirty work and, you know, digging your elbows into the mud as you crawl underneath the barbed wire and then climbing up is, is um, getting that running jump to climb the, the big wall and climb up over and be on the other side of that and into the next obstacle. You're the one that's actually going to have to do that. Your soul is along for the ride. Your higher self, absolutely. Your guides, angels, crossover loved ones are along for the ride. But you're the one here 
doing the work. You're the avatar, you know, in the game, making the moves, going through the heartbreak and the happiness and the tears and the melancholy and the depression and the happiness again, because it's a roller coaster ride. <laughs> but you're doing it. Your spirit, your higher self, man, proud of you. That's what I just heard. I am proud of you. Keep going. Wow. This went in. You guys, we had to, we, of course, I knew Kurt was going to deliver with an amazing message for you, but you guys are doing it. So even if you still feel like a lot of your life is tangled up in that 3D matrix net, give yourself some grace as you, you know, work to untangle all the different pieces of you out of this. And just know, feeling into that heart space and knowing that you were never disconnected from the actual divine matrix. You just maybe because of the overlaid 3D matrix forgot. It's kind of an amnesia thing. But you're remembering. That's the beauty here. You're remembering. All right, group three. Wow, this was beautiful. I love you guys so much. I always love to hear from you. So if you leave a comment, or share a story, I always try to read as many as I can. We are upwards of 18.5k um, as I'm filming this. So it's getting harder every day, but I'm at least trying to read and heart every comment I get. If not, try to respond to those who are responding to my pick of cards. I love you guys so much. So thanks again for all your likes, comments, shares, subscribes, and all the things. And I really, truly do hope to see you right here back at the Den Creative and also over on my live stream channel, The Den Creative Live, where I go live doing readings over there a few times a week. The link for that channel is in the description below. And also, not quite at the time of my posting, but maybe at the time of your watching this, if it's after September 6, 2021, my Patreon will be live at that point. Um, so come check that out if you feel so inclined to join us over there in the High Vibe Tribe. Hope to see you there. All right, bye.